Okay, so welcome everybody to Rethink Renting. We know that most of the people on this call are likely renting or know someone that's renting right now and are thinking that they want to get into home ownership and aren't necessarily sure what their options might be or what the next steps are. So we're going to get into that. Um, like Dale said, we've got Carlin in the background operating things. If you've got questions, we'll try to address them as we go through. Otherwise, we're going to jump right into it, all right? Our agenda today, first and foremost, we're going to talk about why do people rent? Benefits of owning your home, cost of renting versus owning, some barriers that you might encounter um, when it comes to purchasing your first home. You're going first from renting into owning. Five crucial steps um, to buying, all right? The first five things that you must do um, in order to achieve a successful purchase and our assisted buyer program. Uh, which is a phenomenal program and we're really excited to, to share that with you guys, okay? So getting into it, renting versus buying it. We've got uh, some pros. Um, Dale, why don't you share that with everybody? Absolutely, so uh, this, this is mostly geared to people that are renting and looking to buy in the near future, even if it is a couple years out. So uh, obviously with renting, you have the low upfront costs and you have more flexibility in, in your options. Uh, than you would with purchasing typically. So uh, there's lower responsibility, um, whereas with home ownership, obviously you have maintenance and, and upkeep that you need to do. Uh, with renting, it also, uh, you can, it can allow for some other investments and uh, usually the landlord takes care of any maintenance, which obviously you have to take care of with yourself or by yourself uh, when you own. Perfect. Um, oh, sorry. And obviously with, uh, with buying as well, you own your own place, you're building equity that you can uh, use in the future for upsizing or other projects that you want to do. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. That building equity is going to be an important theme that we talk that's, about. That's the huge one. Whereas obviously with renting, you're, you're paying your landlord's mortgage rate. Exactly. So costs of renting versus buying. All right. Um, up front, when you're renting, typically we're looking at a deposit of two months rent. Okay. And then depending on what type of, uh, what type of property you're renting, whether it's just a room in a house, if you're a student or you're looking to rent a large family home, you know, those costs vary anywhere from 600 to $3,000 a month. All right. Um, things on top of your rent that you might have to pay for, uh, internet cable, utilities, and then sometimes you might get a property that's offering an all-in rent, which is just one simple, easy payment, and it's your rent, utilities, internet, all included with that, okay? Your buying costs, um, minimum down payment, payment of 5%. Impossible to get around, you've gotta have that 5% cash up front. Obviously, going forward, you're making monthly mortgage payments, and uh, you're on top of that as well. You've got internet cable, utilities, hydro and gas, and home insurance, all right? Which isn't something that you typically see with renters where you do see renters insurance, okay? Now, we're gonna get into a little bit of a, um, a case study, an analysis. So what I did is I took some, some properties that are currently listed on the MLS literally this morning. This information was fresh. Um, so I took two properties that are in the same neighborhood. They're very comparable, three beds. Um, same size to double car garage. They look very similar even. And we are going to compare your monthly costs for renting one of these properties versus owning one of these properties and what that looks like at the end of a five year term. Okay. So with your renting, all of your costs are there. Rent, um, utilities, hydro, uh, insurance, everything's included. Buying, same thing. Mortgage, taxes, hydro, um, home insurance, all of that's there, all right? And the key thing that I wanna draw your attention to is the difference in monthly costs. It is about $35,400 more that you're gonna pay out over that five year term to own a property, all right? So it's more expensive, your monthly costs. Upfront costs, we talked about, you've got your two months rent that you need to get into a rental, and that's really your only upfront cost, okay? Uh, when you're buying, you need your 5% down payment. And with this property, that's about 24. Land, tran land transfer tax when you're purchasing a property and closing costs, things like lawyer fees, adjustments, disbursements, all of that's included. So you're considerably higher upfront cost to purchase a property, all right? Um, where this really gets interesting is when you start to look at the equity that you're building up during, over this period, all right? So if you were to invest and buy a property, uh, 
your equity starts with your down payments. All right. That's money that you own in the house. It's not borrowed. It's not a mortgage. All right. As you're making those monthly payments and you're putting equity back into your pocket, because when you make a mortgage payment, part of that is interest, but part of that is principal. You're paying back that loan and that's money that you now own equity in the house. And over a five year term, you're making 74, 000, almost $75,000 worth of equity in principle you're paying off. Okay. And market appreciation is something that you can take advantage of when you buy a property, you own that property. In London, over the past few years, what we've seen is anywhere from 10 to 18% per year, an increase in value, all right? That's high. Um, what I've done here is taken a market appreciation of 4% per year, which is very conservative. And if you were to purchase that property, almost $600,000 is a lot of money. Um, but if you were to increase that property by 4% for five years in a row, market appreciation is almost $130,000. So your equity position at the end of that five year term with your down payment, your repaid principal and your market appreciation is almost $230,000. So big upfront cost, but real big payoff when you consider all that equity that you're putting back into the property, all right? So how do we go from renting to owning, Dale? Well, so we've got five steps here. So all five are important. Um, so we'll just go through them here. Obviously you need to get educated and establish your timeline. So uh, talking to us, obviously that's part of getting educated and doing research on, on what all the steps are and what your local market is like, uh, building up that down payment. Uh, I would say number three and four are the most important out of these five steps. So getting pre-approved, so that's talking to a mortgage agent. Uh, finding out what you can afford realistically, right? And not overextending yourself. Uh, yep. They do a credit check as well. Uh, and then number four would be meeting with a real estate agent. So Cam and myself, happy to chat with you, answer any questions. And then obviously start by going out and viewing properties and getting aggressive in the market. Yeah, these are, these are super important. And another part of that timeline establishment, one, building up your down payment is going to be important to establishing that timeline. We know that it's probably going to take you know, most people quite a bit of time to save up that down payment, but your timeline also has to do with the, the rental situation that you're currently in, right? If you just signed a, a one, two year lease, you're obligated to fulfill that. Okay. If you're on a month to month, you need 60 days notice before you're out of there. Right? So that's all part of it. Okay. And that's, that's a big part of the process. So qualifying for a mortgage, all right, getting pre-qualified before you go shopping for a home. Receiving a pre-approval from an A lender is often the most difficult part of buying your first home, okay? An A lender is um, a federally regulated bank or lender that fits in a, in a category and follows certain guidelines, and they are going to offer the lowest interest rates on a mortgage, all right? And a B lender is somebody who offers, they're not federally regulated, and they're for people that can't qualify for an A lender, all right? Um, and those interest rates are just going to go higher and higher. All right. So in order to qualify for an A lender, all right, um, you need adequate income to support the purchase. You can't be loaned anything if you don't make any money, right? Um, good credit, anything below 660 is going to exclude you from an A lender. Okay. Um, and down payment. All right. You need that minimum 5%. Okay. You know, the more income you make, the better your credit and the higher your down payment, uh, the better your interest rate is going to be. All right, so we're going from A to B. And what if you don't have one or two of those items? Okay, maybe credit took a hit. You have a smaller down payment. What are your options there? We've got B lender and private equity funds. So we talked about a B lender. Private equity funds would be for those folks who, those are gonna be your highest interest rates. That's like, when you're working with a mortgage broker, worst case scenario, that's your last option, okay? It's there for you um, if your income, credit, or down payment is, is not adequate, okay? And sometimes it's, it's a short-term solution. But what if one of those options doesn't fit? You might be thinking, you know, I, I know I'm not gonna qualify for mortgage right now. I'm gonna be stuck renting forever, which is really not the case. You know, we're really happy to be able to talk about this other program that we've got available to us. So, Dale. Yeah, so uh, Clover Properties, they have an assisted buyer program. They're a well-established company here in Canada. 
they're Canadian owned. They're actually out of Vaughan in Ontario, so not too far away from here. Uh, mm -hmm. They've been in business over 10 years with a proven track record. They've helped over 365 families uh, go from renting into home ownership. Uh, it's a very efficient program. They coach you from beginning to end through the whole process. And uh, they've got amazing customer service and relations. And like I said, they're a Canada owned and operated uh, nationwide company. Exactly. And their program is somewhat exclusive. Uh, the Santa Sales Houses team is proud to say that we are their exclusive partner for the London and St. Thomas area. All right. So this is one of the best assisted buyer programs in the entire country. And we are the people that they've chosen to partner with in this area. And we're extremely proud about that. All right. We're able to bring this program to, to consumers in our area. Now, just to add a little bit to that as well, Cam. Um, so I, uh, Cam and I have talked to other uh, uh, buyer, assistant buyer programs in the past, and they, yep. they just don't have the, the same feel and knowledge. And, and uh, you know, the, these guys are amazing uh, dealing with them. Um, yep. uh, you know, anyway, let's continue on here. All about their commitment to, to the tenant, the tenant buyer, right? Absolutely. They, they want to do the best for everybody involved, right? And, and coach everybody and answer people's questions along the way. Exactly. Their whole goal is, their number one goal is to help people get into a home and put themselves on a path to home ownership. It's not about making money. Their number one goal is helping people. Okay. So how do you qualify? How do you become a part of this program and get started on that pathway? First and foremost, income to support your purchase. There's no way to get around that. Okay. Everyone needs to have the income to support whatever they're hoping to buy. All right. And a down payment, you will need a down payment up front, but in most cases it's smaller than a traditional purchase. All right. Other situations where this applies. If you have bad credit, we talked about that. You're likely not looking at an A or a B lender. Okay. Um, you went through a split up, you made some mistakes younger and you're, you were younger, you got your first credit card. Um, whatever the situation is. If you have poor credit, they have coaching available. What if you're self-employed? You don't report all of your income to the government, right? As, an, as a self-employed person, you get to write off a lot of your expenses. And what they'll look at is your gross income as opposed to your net, okay? What if I'm new to the country? You don't have established credit, you just got a new job. These are both scenarios where this assisted buyer program can help you get into or get on the path to home ownership as opposed to just jumping into a rental right away. Okay. So advantages to this program, Dale. So, I mean, you can see the ones on the screen here. I would say the most important one on here is the, the pre-established conservative purchase price, which we'll get into. So basically they'll, uh, as Cam, Cam had earlier in the slides, um, London has been appreciating at about 10 to 18% a year for the last four years. So they establish the purchase price that you will be uh, buying the home at eventually in about two, three, four years uh, from the time that you start the program. Um, and they set that rate at 4%. And it, every, all the numbers are laid out for you and, and agreed upon at that point. So it's a very conservative and fair program and price. So by the time you actually uh, purchase the property two to four years down the road, you've actually established equity in the property because there's a high chance that it'll be increasing uh, faster than 4% a year. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it, it also, like I said, they, they have the coaching assistance. So uh, the bottom middle slide or box there as well, uh, they'll coach you through if you have bruised credit or need to, to repair some credit for whatever your scenario was. Right? So they, they teach you how to do that properly so that you can rebuild it so that the time, when the time comes, you actually qualify for those A lending programs that Cam had mentioned. Yeah. And that guaranteed savings assistance is there to build up that down payment, right? Um, so that's part, that's built into your monthly payment right off the bat. Yeah. Okay. So application and approval process. So it starts with a conversation with myself or Dale. We're gonna ask you a couple questions just to get an idea of what it is you're looking for in your situation. Once we've done that, we've had that initial conversation, we're gonna introduce you to our partners at Clover Properties so that they can go further into that process, all right? Once they've had a chance to, to talk to you, they're gonna ask for some documentation to support um, your income and your down payment availability, all right? If you're approved, once that document is submitted, um, they're going to establish a budget, okay? If you're not approved, they're not gonna leave you high and dry, all right? It's like I said, their goal is to help people. So 
if you're not approved right off the bat, they're going to help coach you so that further down the road, you are in a position to participate in the program. Okay. They're going to give you steps that you can follow along and you you're able to, um, to work on towards that. All right. Like I said, once that budget is there, it's time to start house hunting. All right. We know what the budget is. Um, and that's going to help us, uh, narrow down the properties that would fit for you. Okay. So home buying process, this is going to look very similar, uh, whether or not you're doing a traditional purchase or you are uh, participating in the assisted buyer program, right, Dale? Absolutely, Cam. Um, so, sorry, I was just reading. Joe has asked a, a couple of questions that popped up in the, the Q and A section there. So, we'll, we'll, Joe, we'll get to those uh, probably at the end here. Um, yeah. So, the the home buying process uh, it, it's very very similar to if you weren't working with an assisted buyer program, if you're just working directly with us as, as a buyer and, and a realtor, right? So uh, we, we do a buyer consultation with you. We figure out uh, where in the city that you prefer to be, uh, the parameters, the criteria of your home. So if you need you know, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, if you need a garage, that sort of thing, as long as it's within the affordability range, then we set that up in a customized listing alert for you. So you see all the current listings that are on the market. And then if tomorrow five properties pop up, we'll send all of those to you as well. Um, so you actually get to go home shopping with us as well, right? So we, we identify all those problem, uh, prop properties and then uh, we go and view them in person. And Absolutely. once you fall in love with one, then we proceed to the offer. Definitely. Okay. So how do you buy the home? So at the start, you find the house. And at that point is when the conditions for your future purchase are determined. All right. So you know up front exactly what you're going to purchase that house for. And you know exactly how long it's going to take. Usually it's two, three or four years. All right. Um, and like Dale said, that purchase price is very conservative. Okay. Uh, you're going to build up your down payment during the tenancy period with that guaranteed um, down payment assistance and work with a financial consultant to improve any credit. Okay. At the end of the program, the program's designed to get you the down payment you need and the credit you need to go with your income to get an A lender mortgage for that property on your own. So at the end of the two, three or four years, you are purchasing that property your, yourself with all of the things that you put together, all the whole hard work that you put into that two, three, four year program. Okay. So to recap, the main points that we talked about today, okay? And like I said, uh, we are gonna get into some questions here. Um, the five steps to go from renting to owning, all right? Education, timeline, uh, building your down payment, speaking with some trusted professionals, so myself or Dale as a realtor and, and one of our preferred mortgage lenders, and then start shopping and getting aggressive. Those are your five steps, things that you need to start right now, okay? Three things to qualify for a mortgage, credit, income, down payment, those things need to be in place to qualify you for an A lender. We talked about the difference between A, B and private lenders, all right? And the Clover Properties Assisted Buyer Program, which is designed to take you from renting, put you on a path to home ownership through an A lender right now, all right? And contact us. So what our goal is, is like Dale said, we wanna help you get into, onto a path for home ownership. All right, so it starts today with those five steps. And if you have questions, we're more than happy to help. Whether or not you're thinking about purchasing in the next three months, next year, next three years, we're here as a resource. We want you to rely on us. Ask us questions. Feel free to reach out to us at any point. All right, um, Dale, anything you want to add? Uh, well, I'm just looking at my picture there, and it looks like I need a haircut. <laughs> uh, but probably everybody does right now. So um, no, uh, other, other than the Q and a here, um, uh, like Cam said, I mean, we're, we're always happy to, to just answer any questions, no charge to you guys. Um, happy to, to meet, even if it's virtually through, through a zoom call or whatever, we can do yep. that as well. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing us here. Um, so next action items, um, everyone that registered for the uh, for the webinar today is going to get a copy of the presentation. We're also going to send out an email that's got some resourceful links that you might use during this time. All right. Um, and once again, you'll have our contact information so that if you need a question answered, you want to get started on the program. Absolutely. We're here to help you get going with that. Okay. So let's dive into some questions here. Um, max house price you can buy under the program. 
There is no max, but it absolutely depends on what your income level is. Okay. That is going to be the most uh, important factor when it comes to determining your shopping budget. Okay. Um, and other things like what your down payment is, um, you know, credit is not going to have as big an impact when you're looking to get into the, sorry, establishing your budget through the assisted buyer program. Okay. Um, your income is going to be the number one determining factor. So I would say no max, but it's going to be determined by your income. Okay. Uh, interest compared to a traditional lender. So like I said, at the culmination of the, uh, the assisted buyer program, the goal is to get you a mortgage from an A lender. So you've got the right down payment, your income is there and your credit has been worked on during that time. Um, there should be no issue getting the best rates available through an A lender, right? And even during the tenancy period, the, 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 per, the properties purchased through an A lender. Okay. Um, so at no point is it, you know, you're paying 10% interest through a, through a private mortgage or anything like that. It's not like that. It's, it's about uh, getting the best rates in there. Okay. Clover program has you rent the house you intend to buy before you can buy it. Dale. Yes. So, so it is a, an assisted buyer program. Other people might call it a rent to own program, right? So you, you need to qualify through Clover's program uh, to based on your income and, yep. and uh, they will, bring in an investor, which is actually purchasing the house on your behalf and you're paying the rent for that two, three, four year program uh, or period, depending on whatever it is that makes the most sense for your scenario. So they will coach you through that whole scenario. Mm -hmm. um, when, when we first were working with Clover, we asked how common is it for a, one of your deals to fall through? They said in over 10 years, they've had one. Uh, so that's a, a fantastic track record. Like I said, they've helped over 365 families now. So they're, they're very diligent in their, their upfront examination of everything, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that they're setting you up for success, right? So that you will actually own this home in two, three, four years time, uh, whatever the time frame is that's decided by you and, and the investors and, and Clover at the beginning. So, yeah. So that's like, that's the main difference between Clover and a lot of other rent to own companies that we've, we've worked with or, you know, had experience with in the past is they're not going to put you in a situation that you're not going to succeed in. Okay. Their process up front is far superior because it's about helping people. It's not about taking people and putting them in a vulnerable position to make money. They want you to succeed at the end of this program. And that is, that's the main difference right there. Okay. Um, Owned two prior houses, then divorced, been renting for 18 months. Am I a first time buyer again? Unfortunately not. A first time buyer is somebody that has never owned property anywhere in the world. All right. Um, with not Canada. With a bit of an exception though. I, I, so I believe there is a clause that says uh, after four years, then okay. you do actually qualify again. So I believe you, there is a four year time frame, and then you can, can qualify again. Uh, there's a, a little bit of misconception out there about a week ago, I was talking uh, with a buyer in that same scenario actually. Um, and there is the, the Canada home buyer program as well. And there's some very vague uh, points on the Canada website right. regarding that. Um, some of it almost contradicts itself, but everything I've heard is from lawyers is that you need a four year uh, term where you and possibly your current uh, common law person, if you have one, um, has, has not owned any real estate. So there's a, there's a difference between the first time home buyers incentive program, which came out last November, mm -hmm. and the traditional first time buyer program through the, the federal government, which the main advantage there is there's a tax credit, but also your $4,000 land transfer tax, right? Right. right. Um, extra cost to the buyer for the Clover program. Your monthly costs are going to be made up of rent, uh, which covers uh, the costs of the owning the home and your down payment. The only extra costs up front, you've got your down payment there. Um, inspection. Your, and your inspection. That's the only thing. Every property purchased through the Clover, um, the Clover Assisted Buyer Program has to have a home inspection done on it. And that is an upfront cost that, uh, that the buyer 
um, has to put up. It's usually around $400. Okay. Those are the only fees. That's everything. Yeah. Right. There is another, uh, Rebecca has asked something in the, the chat over here as well. Yeah. Uh, so is this program available for second properties? So you want to purchase a second property through the Clover assisted buyer program to then live in? Good question. I will, or, okay. Yes. She says yes. So, and you want to keep your first property as a rental. Yes. Interesting. My assumption would be the answer is no. However, I, I would say we're going to have to run this by Clover themselves just to see if they've had this scenario before, because well, I, I suppose even your, your credit scenario and, and your situation can change, even though you do own a home, whether you currently live in it yourself or, or have it as a rental property, right? So you could be renting and still own a, a property um, and looking to buy a secondary property, right? So I, I, my initial gut reaction is no to that. However, like I said, let's bounce that off and get back to you. We can follow up with an email or. Yeah, good question, Rebecca. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, last question that we've got here from uh, Joe. How many of your buyers are meeting the 20% down payment to avoid CMHC fees? Now, are you talking about a traditional purchase or through the uh, assisted buyer program? Because that is hard to say. The down payment is determined for the assisted buyer program by Clover based on the, the purchase price of what you're make, of, of purchasing. Um, our traditional, our clients that we're working with right now, to be honest with you, it depends what you're looking to do. Um, there's an advantage to paying less than 20% down right now because of the way rates are looking. You can get a lower interest rate on a, um, a high ratio insured mortgage as opposed to a uh, uninsured mortgage. So if you put 20% down, yes, you, you have a lesser mortgage, but you're paying higher interest fees. So there's, there's pros and cons to both situations there. Okay. Okay. So, so Joe, to, traditionally or typically I would say most buyers that are putting more than 20% down are probably onto their second or third home, yeah. right? Their, their careers are more established. They've built some equity up in their, their first and second homes, and then they can afford to, uh, to upsize or possibly they're at a point where they're downsizing, right? So they, they might be putting 50% or even a hundred percent down sometimes and not even having a mortgage rate. So um, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but most first time buyers are, are more like five to 10% down. Exactly. Uh, yeah. that, that aren't using this program, right? So, um, an interesting point. If you are, yeah, so Joe, you're, that's a good question. A mortgage broker absolutely will help you decide whether it's better to put 20% down or not. Okay. And it's going to be based on personal preference. Um, you know, if you have a preconceived notion about an insured mortgage or not, um, I just know that in most cases, you are going to get a lower interest rate by putting less than 20% down right now. Okay. If you are a first time home buyer and you're looking at taking part of the first time home buyer incentive, all right, which is a shared equity program that the federal government and CMHC is, um, is role. Well, they started it last November. They won't let you put 20% down. Okay. If you purchase a new house, they'll kick in 10% up to a max value based on your income and the purchase price. Um, if it's a resale home, they'll kick in 5%, but they won't let you get to that 20%. That will always be an insured mortgage through CMHC. All right. I don't think too many people are really taking advantage of that. Yeah. Honestly, in, in this area, anyway. one client since November, take advantage of that. And, uh, it's working out great for them, but, uh, you know, they, they, they spoke with a mortgage broker. They really thought about all the scenarios. Um, but yeah, they were, they were planning to put in 10 and the government put in 10 so they could avoid those CMHC fees. The government said, no, you can only put in 5% or huh. you don't qualify for the program. So something to think about. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions here. These were fantastic questions. They were, yes, thank you. If you have something that's a little bit more uh, particular to your situation, um, 
you know, you really want to have a conversation about it, please feel free to reach out to us. I know that Dale and myself are always available, um, especially if you send us an email, we can set up a time to, you know, either have a phone call or jump on a Zoom chat. Always happy to do that. Um, but we do have, you know, that was, a, I really am curious to see what Clover Property says about that, uh, that second property question. Um, if nobody's got any more questions, we're going to sign off. Once again, we're going to send everyone a copy of the presentation. You're going to have a resource sheet sent to you with a, a ton of links that's going to really help you um, kind of keep this process moving. All right. Uh, we hope that you found some value in this. Um, we'd love to hear from you in the future. All right. Dale, anything to add there? I just want to say thanks again to everybody for joining us. Um, it's kind of a, a rainy, drizzly day out there. So uh, glad we can, can get together, even if it's virtually here, and, and uh, see everybody. Agreed. Thanks again for joining us. And uh, we will be hosting these again in the future. So uh, keep an eye open if you have uh, other friends and family that you think it might work for. Uh, feel free to, to ha mention it to them or just reach out to us directly. You got it. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Take care, guys.